Hi again, everybody. Each week when we send out our Cell Leaders Guide, we include a little bit of context behind the passage of Scripture or the section of Scripture that we're studying. And we give it to you in a written form. But I understand that some of you like reading and others of you prefer to see or to hear that context. So I've taken the exact same material that we've put into written form and I'm going to just share it with you over this video now. As you probably know, we've been having a look at the book of Revelation. We divided it up into four big subsections and we're looking at each one of those subsections. But just that you understand the context of the book of Revelation, it's actually a book of encouragement, a book of hope, a book given to people uh, who were in a time of the persecuted church who needed to hear some form of encouragement. And the core verse in the whole book comes from Revelation 17 verse 14. They will make war on the Lamb, and the Lamb will conquer them. For He is the Lord of lords and King of kings, and those with Him are called and chosen and faithful. And to some extent, in this period of lockdown, which has just been extended by two weeks, it's an important message for us to hear, that He is the Lord of lords and King of kings, and those who follow Him are called to be called, chosen and faithful. And so as we get to the section chapter 17 to 20, the core message is to look up and not to give up. By now you're probably feeling the effects of the isolation and the book of Revelation is an important book to people in times of hardship or trials or isolation because as I said earlier it's a book of comfort, of encouragement during a time of hardship and trial. Right through the book, we see this incredible message. God is on his throne and Jesus is unfolding his salvation plan for creation. And that's the message that John was writing to all those churches in Asia Minor during this period of intense persecution uh, that had unfolded. Just to let me give you a quick recap of where we've been. We divided the book into four big uh, subsections, chapters one to three. The first part of John's revelation is that the church has not been abandoned by God and God's people have not been abandoned during hardship. The Spirit reveals Jesus walking amongst his people, encouraging them, correcting them, calling them forth. The second chunk of the book is from chapters 4 to 16. And John is trying to show that God is on the throne in all his goodness and glory. The people were experiencing very tough times. And John wants to emphasize this thing that even in tough times, God is on the throne. And so we see the story of the scrolls of God's salvation plan since the beginning of creation starting to be opened. And Jesus opens the seals and he rolls out God's kingdom rule and calls the nations to repentance. In the section that we're going to look at today, which is chapter 17 to 20, the third part of this prophecy unfolds when John reveals the true nature of this world. And in very vivid imagery, he likens this world to the seductive Babylon and her power-hungry beast. We see that in chapter 17. In chapters 18, 19, and 20, we see John describe the fall and the judgment and all those who follow the beast will be judged as well. And so what John is showing us is that this world is fallen. John is trying to encourage the believers to keep hope and to stay close to Jesus. Many of them were faltering in their faith. They were giving up their faith. They were, they were confessing Caesar as Lord instead of Jesus Christ as Lord. And John is trying to speak to the people who were struggling with the hardship, the isolation. And he uses very strong images here. And he describes the perverse, power-hungry nature of the world as corrupted and it will fade away. But the message behind it is don't put your hope in what you're seeing around you. Don't put your hope in the news and politicians and people. He turns this around to remind them that one day Christ will return to bring justice and goodness, peace and restore joy to the people. It's a big picture with a very simple message to us today. Look up. Don't give up. 
And to the people of the day, that message of judgment brought comfort and hope. To the people who were suffering, it said to them, there is a bigger picture. Look up, don't give up. And when they did look up, they saw God's kingdom where the oppressed are freed, the hungry are fed, and the naked are clothed because the oppressors were judged. Here's the big question. How does this apply to us today? Again, it's a simple message. Look up, don't give up. The early believers experienced intense reassurance from, from John's encouragement. Most of them were wanting to give up their faith because of the shaking. And John's message came to them and said, look up, don't give up. And so it applies to us today. Are you experiencing shaking? Can you feel the turbulence? Is this isolation causing you hardship? What do you feel when you see the economic realities? And how are you coping with some of these unknowns? And we see similar messages in other books. In the wisdom part of the Bible in Ecclesiastes, we see this. He has made everything beautiful in his time. He has also set eternity in the hearts of men. Yet they cannot fathom what God has done from the beginning of time. And then the beautiful verse from Psalm 46, Surrender your anxiety, be silent and stop your striving, and you will see that I am God. I am the God above all the nations, and I will be exalted throughout the whole earth. When the early believers were facing so many unknowns and their very lives were threatened, John released this prophecy. It's the simple truth here. Set eternity in your hearts. Have a long-term view. Look up. Don't give up. And when we don't know our tomorrows, we must set our hearts on eternity. We must look at the big picture. We must draw hope that this world is not it. At that point, anxiety can be surrendered. We need to learn to reason life from the whole to the part and not the part to the whole. As we come today as a church that is meeting in the home, we're going to look at these two scriptures and I encourage you to do exactly what John wanted you to do, to look up and to not give up. Have an eternal perspective, set eternity in your hearts and ask God what he is saying to you in your circumstances and how it applies. I believe that as we do that, God will release the, the prophecy in this book into your heart. It's a prophecy of hope of encouragement, of comfort. And it reminds us always that there is a big picture here. So look up, don't give up.